Well now on BBC Radio 4, it's time for the afternoon play and the winner of the Tinniswood Award for Best Radio Script 2005 to 2006. A tale of mystery, identity and long-suppressed feelings. Beast by Nick Warburton with James Fleet Eve Best and Struan Roger. I was out in the boat. A flat sea like this in a calm grey sky. There was rain about, I could tell. But before there was the rain, the beast appeared. This is how it happened. I was out alone and there was little sign of anything about, how many fish, the other boats already turned for home, the sky almost empty of birds. I made up my mind to return too, but before I could, there was a pull on the net. Whoa! The boat lurched. I, I grabbed the net and then everything, everything held still for a moment, in, in, entirely still. I waited. Uh, and what came into my mind then was the story Father Anthony told us of the apostles fishing and catching nothing and Jesus telling them to cast again on the other side of the boat and they did and the net was filled a multitude of fishes but the net did not break 153 fishes I thought all this as, as I felt the tension in the net and waited for the next thing to happen then it pulled again, not the pull of a multitude, the pull of one, a single thing. And I tightened my grip. That's the way, beauty. You come to me. Come into me. I called it out of the sea. And suddenly there was no more tug on the net. I felt only softness beneath the water, yielding. So I, I looked over the side and something was looming towards me from the depths. A twisted thing, like a claw, was reaching up at me. It grasped the net, uh, and at the same moment I pulled, and, and it surged into the net. And then it was in the boat, bellied in the net and lolloping on the planks. Huge. I grabbed for the oar, for anything. Dear God. Dear God, alive. What is it? And that was the first I saw of the beast. Lifeless and streaming in the bottom of the boat. Curled in a tangle of limbs and net and seaweed. I had no notion what it was. Or why it came. What now? What am I going to do with you? My first thought was to ask old Jonas. I'd learned the sea with Jonas. He knew all there was to know. I watched what he did and learned from him. But only slowly. Jonas never said much unless you asked. Now he was finished with the sea. And he lived with his daughter, Rowena. She cared for him because he couldn't care for himself. She won't want me calling on Jonas, I know that. No, Rowena barely had a civil word for me then because she said I was the cause of all their bad luck. But here I was with this mystery from the sea. And if anyone knows what it is, it'll be Jonas. And I had to ask someone. What do you want? To see Jonas. What? I have to. It won't do you I any to good. To him. Even you must know that. I need his help, Rowena. Help? He'd want to help me, Jonas would. And why would he want that? After what you did? My father nearly died. I thought he was dead. And you were the cause, weren't you? Weren't you? You took him out on that boat on that black night when he barely had the strength to walk. Everyone knew he was sick. You did too. Yes. Not another soul went out on that night. Not one man along the whole coast. And then you bring him back to me more dead than alive. It wasn't like that. Then how was it? You were there. Tell me. 
Tell me why you rode him into the teeth of a storm. Because he asked me to. Then why didn't you say no? You've had long enough to visit him, Clay. Any time you could have come to see him. I've come now. And you never said. Not a word of sorry or, or shame. Or... <laughs> you leave a basket of fish outside the door. That's you, isn't it? Yes. To pay your conscience? No. No? A basket of fish? You think that's good enough? I... Why didn't you come? Oh, I don't know. Because I knew what you thought. What we all thought, Clay. That my father nearly died. And you were to blame. I am sorry for what happened, Rowena. You know I am. <sighs> How would I know that when you've never said? Well, there was a time when you could tell what was in my mind. Well, I can't now. What do you want to see him for? I have to tell him. To ask him. Ask him? You make it worse, you do. You come round here to laugh at me. No. You do. You must. You've got things to ask him, have you? Well, then go into him now. Ask him. There he sits, Clay. Tell him what you have to tell him. And then see what answer you get. He was sitting in an upright chair by the window, looking straight out, beyond the fence and the couch grass, out to sea. Jonas? He didn't look or move when I went in, just kept his face to the light from the sea. He didn't turn when I said his name. Jonas? It's me, Clay. I've got something to tell you, something I found, and I, I don't know what to do about it. You hear that? That's as much as you'll get. He doesn't speak. Not a word. I had no idea. Of course not. How would you? I'm sorry, Rowena. I, I shouldn't have come. You should have come a lot sooner than this, Clay. Well, now you are here. Sit down. Talk to him. Talk to him, but I... He won't answer. He won't even blink. But it'll be a change of voice. And who knows what he comprehends. I thought he comprehended nothing at all. But I moved a chair close and talked to him. I told him how I caught the beast. Rowena stayed in the doorway listening. And Jonas stared out of the window as if he could see it all so clear. There was nothing out there. Just one star over a bank of grey cloud. Did you ever come across the lightning, Jonas? Because, really, uh, I don't know what to do. Where is this thing now? What? Where is it? Penned in the old sty, back of the cottage. Alive? I think so. I can't leave it there, though. And what can you do? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do, Rowena. It's safe enough. I boarded up the gaps. I'll come and see it then. No. You can't make your mind up on your own, Clay, can you? I'll, I'll do something. You won't. You'll think one thing and then you'll think another and you won't decide. That's what Father always said. What? You know it. That's why he found fault. Yes, I know it well enough. It was never that he didn't like you, but you were such a dreamer. You still are. Not reliable. Light that lamp and I'll go with you. And tell you what to do. And she smiled, the way she used to smile. Quickly, for fear she might be thought light-hearted. Yes, look, between the planks. You can just see... Where? If I left the lamp... <gasps> it's still alive. Do you see? Something. I saw it move. That's it. I just saw something move. A clump of something. What kind of thing is it? No kind I've ever seen before. And it belongs to the sea. It came from the sea. That's all I know. I, I can't see properly. All the lamps still. Yes. It's pressed down in the corner. It doesn't look that big. That's just the track of bones along its spine. It's bigger than it looks. You can't see its head. How'd you get it here? I dragged it on a length of old sail. Didn't it struggle? No. Told you, it was lifeless. I hit it with the oar, tried to kill it. 
I, I don't know what it was or what it wanted, but it intended something. I had to hit it. You could have killed it. I know, I meant to, but I couldn't finish it. I mean, it was there, helpless enough. But... It comes from the sea, Clay. You don't pity the sea or anything from it. No. It never pitied us. No. You wouldn't have to fret over this if you'd killed it then and there. I was going to. Shh. Listen. Is that a sea sound? I never heard any sea creature sound like that. I can't keep it here. Well, one more blow, you said. No. You can still do that. You said it's ugly, it's from the sea. I can't, not now. I could talk to Father Anthony. The priest? Why? You wait long enough, they'll hear about it at the castle. Yes. And then what? You can't make a secret of it, Clay. If you're not going to kill it... I'm not! Then tell them up at the castle. They're the masters, let them decide what to do with it. So we went up to the castle. And they made us wait around in courtyards while they considered. Then led us up and down staircases to tell the story again to someone else. We ended up in a cold little room, stone, with a slit of a window. A man came in said his name was Digby, captain of the guard. And you're the ones who've been telling the story of a creature? Yes, my lord. And you found it in the first place? Not me. Clay here. He was fishing. Can he speak? We don't know, my lord. The fisherman. Can he speak? Yes, my lord. Then let him. You were fishing? Yes, sir. It got caught in my net. Yes. And, and I brought it in. We know you brought it in. Tell us what happened in detail. So I told the story again, just as I'd told it to Jonas. And when you pulled it into the boat, you say it didn't struggle? No. It came freely, in a way. It flapped in the bottom of the boat a while. Like a fish? Only so far like a fish, sir, because when a fish moves, even a big fish, it's smooth. The movement is slick. You don't notice the bones. And with this thing, you did. They were like sticks and clubs. You thought they could do damage. <clears throat> so I, I hit it with the oar, uh, and then I secured the net, and then, uh, then I brought it in. I see. And what do you think it is? Me? I don't know. Not a fish. It's like a fish. In a, in a way, a seal is like a fish. But it has limbs. A man, then? I don't know. It's not for me to say. But do you have an opinion? No, sir. And you? It's not a man, no, my lord. Well, it came out of the sea, so it can be, can it? Tell me, do you ever see foreign boats whilst you're fishing? Sir? Foreign fishing vessels. Sometimes, yes. They're drifting closer than they're meant to, but they don't stay long. Did you see any when you caught the beast? Well, I can't recall. I don't... I don't think so. You would swear an oath there was none? Nothing before it turned up, no. But afterwards, uh, I couldn't say. I had my hands full, but, but, but I, I don't think... You, the beast makes sounds, you say. Sounds come from its mouth or throat? Yes, sir. Is it speaking, do you think? I, I, I don't know. Is it making sounds that... Did you hear it make sounds that might have been speech, either of you? Not English speech, my lord. Foreign speech? Eh? Any kind of foreign speech? I, I thought... Uh... What? You thought what? I don't know. I, I, I thought it, it meant something when it, it made some sounds. It, it meant us to understand something. It, like a goose means you to go away when it hisses, that's all. Just creature sounds, not more than that. I see. Well, then, uh, we'd better see this creature for ourselves, I think. So they came to see it. The captain and a couple of soldiers all clustered round the sty at the back of the cottage. And folk were awake and curious by this time, so they attracted a lot of staring. Digby sent for a cart so they could take the beast up to the castle. He brought us back too and made us wait again. He wasn't finished with us yet, he said. Eventually, they took us down some winding steps, right down deep, till you could feel the cold of the earth coming in through the walls. To a round chamber with a dirt floor, 
a dungeon. The only light came from a fire in an iron basket. Three or four men stood round the fire. They looked up when we came in, and their faces seemed to float in the dark. Clay, ah, come forward. I need to ask you more. I've told you all I know. Did you communicate with the creature? Communicate? Was there comprehension, do you think, in some unguarded moment? Or was there, even if only fleetingly, any scrap of understanding between you at any point? We told you, sir, it just made sounds. The sounds of a beast. I don't mean sounds. Some other way. Communication by other means. I didn't notice. Well, I wonder. It came willingly to your nets, you said. That's how it seemed, yes. Why was that? I don't know. Well, we've examined the beast now. Its very ugliness suggests it's not human. At least not in any significant way. It is repulsive. But somehow it seemed to understand what was going on. Is that what you found? It knew something, I suppose, yes. Yes, but what? What does it know? When we put questions to it, it wouldn't answer. It's a beast, my lord. It can't answer. Unless it chose not to answer. That is possible. Why do you have to know? It comes out of the sea. It doesn't belong here. But wherever it's from and whatever it thinks, it doesn't belong. So what's it matter if it understands? Of course it does. Or, or what you do with it. Because, oh, don't you see? If it is human in some remote way, if it has the qualities and attributes of a man, even a simple man, well then, we simply can't kill it. Why not? Because we don't know what it knows. If it turns out to be from a foreign power, say. What? Washed overboard somewhere, or if it's been studying the fortifications along the coast. It hasn't. You cannot know that. I am responsible to the master of this castle for its safety and the safety of all the land along this coast. And the master is responsible to the king himself. The coast here is difficult. It's difficult. Any coast is. All along here we're open to attack from the sea, so I have to do what is right. I have to be very sure. I see. What we do with a beast depends on what it is. <laughs> so... Of course we have to know. But if it doesn't answer questions... Then we have to make our questions absolutely clear. We have to make them irresistible. It must answer if it has the capability. You've had it chained. We can't take risks with something like this. We prepare for everything. We try every possible side turning. And you can tell us nothing else? No, sir. All right, you can go now. Thank you, my lord. As we left, I caught sight of it in the firelight, crouched on the ground, clawing at the dirt. That's how it moved on land, by dragging itself along like a wounded thing. I only saw it for a moment in the flicker from the fire. Its gaze was fixed on the fire, and I'd swear it knew what was to come. Sir, it, it can't talk. I said, you can go now. Fire won't help you. Go. Get them out of here. It wasn't pain. It was the fear of pain. It entered my head. <laughs> couldn't get clear of it. You saw it when they brought it in? Yes. What they meant to do? How would I know what they... We saw the chains. You knew it was chained. They had to do that, And it saw the fire for itself. It knew what they were planning. That doesn't and mean... And you heard the sound it made before they shut the door on us. What's it matter? Oh, you've stirred everything up, Clay, like you always do. You bring trouble and people won't thank you for it. Well, so do what's simple. Is that what you think? Kill the thing or cast it back in the sea? Oh, the sea should have kept it in the first place. That's what I hate about this place. The sea. The sea, you know. Every endless struggle we always have with it. Makes us think so small. 
I would not live here, Clay. I tell you, I would not choose to live here. But you must. Yes. But it's pity keeps me here, that's all. <laughs> you went to the castle. It was the right thing to do, the only thing. Now forget about it. But I couldn't forget. Once I knew what they were doing, that was it. I knew. I went back to the castle to see what I could learn. Waited outside the gates. Nothing, hardly any movement in or out. And I kept hearing that sound. I knew it was inside my head, but it, it sounded as if it was drifting up from under the earth. And then, one night, I saw a cart driven out of the castle gates. Who's there? It's me, father. Clay. Clay? What do you want? You can't come in here. You know that. Not today. Can I not worship, father? Church is for all the village, isn't it? Every day. And have you come to worship? How did you know about this thing? Because I found it in the first place. We took it to the castle because we thought they'd know... We? Rowena came with me. Rowena? Yes, I told her about it. Well, I thought you'd given up calling there. I went to ask Jonas what I should do. Oh, good heavens, man. You thought he'd tell you, did you? I, uh... I, I didn't know how bad he was. Then you should have done. After what you did that night. You talk as if you know what I did, Father. I visited them. I went to help Rowena. She never knew. Not the whole story. No one did. Of you all think you know enough to cast a stone? What was it, then? What happened? Where have they stowed the beast? In the bell tower. The bell tower? Is that safe? They've chained it to the wall. It can't get out that way. Though I doubt if it will be capable of trying from the look of it. There's a guard about the place somewhere. Why did they bring it here? <laughs> because they got nowhere with it in their dungeon. Uh, Clay, I shouldn't be talking to you about this. And you can get somewhere with it, can you? Well, they think so. They mean to place the creature before the holy objects, the altar, the painting of our Lord on the screen, the, the chalice and the cross. Why? To see how it reacts. If it knows anything of God, if it's more than merely beast, then it will respond to those holy objects, uh, and we will be able to tell. Will we? I don't know. The captain believes so. I have seen bishops who barely register a twitch when they're set before the altar. <laughs> But perhaps bishops are different. Come and see. And when they've got their answer, what then? Oh, they haven't thought about that. They're hoping for divine intervention. They're hoping they won't have to decide anything themselves. It's in here. Is it safe? I, I mean... Perfectly. You'll see. The room was bare. And almost empty. The bell ropes hung down out of the dark. They'd been looped together beyond reach. There was a pile of old black cloth on the floor, and that's where the beast lay. Chains fixed it to a ring in the wall. It was turned away, not moving. <gasps> Nothing moved except the ropes swinging in the air above it. Whatever it is, this is not its element. Dry stone and closed in? No. I never meant to bring any creature to this state. You didn't? I began it, yes. Look at it. He's barely living. I wouldn't get too close. I'm in no danger, Father. Not from this. I saw its eyes move to catch where the sound was coming from. Oh. Oh, I am sorry for this. And it looked at me, directly at me. That night, I dreamt of Jesus in the storm, the same Jesus on the screen above the altar. He's asleep in the boat with his head on a red pillow. And the disciples are awake and afraid, and there's black clouds swirling above them. A little tub of a boat it is, like a walnut shell. It wouldn't last a real storm. In the dream, the disciples turned into fish, great gaping fish, all pressed together and mouthing to the storm clouds. They were fish, 
just playing fish, but I knew they were terrified. And Jesus wasn't Jesus anymore. He was old Jonas. He was still asleep, and I, I tried to wake him. I hit the side of the boat with my fist to wake him. What? What is it? Rowena? What happened, Clay? When? At the church. You went up to the church. You didn't say what you found there. Because you didn't want to know. Well, the whole village has heard about it. And half of them want to see it for themselves. Yes, to go up at a monster. Something to scare themselves with or laugh at because it's ugly and dangerous. Is it dangerous? It's chained up. Half the life's been beaten out of it. Its flesh is dry and cracked. Why do you want to know all of a sudden? I don't know. I was awake early, that's all. And thinking. Thinking? Yes. Sitting with father, looking out of the window. And I... I got him some milk to drink. I think he was thirsty because he drank it down so quickly. And, and he looked at me while he was drinking. With his face still in the cup. And that kind of look. Like you sometimes see on a calf when you hold a pail for its feed. The way its eye rolls. I know. He was looking at me. He knew it was me. Poor thing. In the afternoon, we went to the tower together to take water to the beast. It was curled up on the floor, staring at the light from the sea on the church wall. We put water in a shallow bowl and set it down. It's not moving. Wait. After a moment, it hooked the bowl with a limb, pulled it closer. It lowered its head to the water. A trail of damp trickled slowly over its flesh, like first rain in a dry riverbed. It's hardly drinking at all, though. No. It's not enough, a trickle like this. I think maybe it's not just thirsty, it's missing the sea. Yes. Then should we? What? Or, or someone, I mean, take it back. To the sea? Well, just to cover its hide with water, to, to revive it. They won't let us do that, Rowena. You, you could talk to Father Anthony. I thought Rowena wanted the creature dead. She did. Now she sees differently. After listening to you, I suppose. No, she just sees a creature longing for water. Maybe like Jonas, sitting there day by day, staring out at the sea. And why does he sit there day after day? I know, but... Uh, just... You interfered. You took him out in the storm. I know, I know. But... And she's forgiven you for that, has she? I don't think so. <laughs> because she doesn't know what happened. No. And you can't say? No. He begged me to take him out. No one else would do it. <laughs> of course they wouldn't. He was a sick man. It was a foolish thing. Yes, because... Because he was sick. Because because he knew he was finished with the boats. That's exactly it. One last time in a big sea. I understood that, Father. So, so yes, I took him. Because to go was a hard thing, but not to go. So you went out of pity. Is that it? And now you want to help the beast for the same reason, pity. Pity isn't always right, Clay. Well, then what is? Just because it feels tender, you have to apply reason. Besides, I haven't got the authority to decide. It's your church, Father. It's God's church, built on the king's land. I can't do it. Well, the creature goes on suffering, then. As a beast suffers, yes. As beasts in the field suffer every day. Or as humans do. Like the cats you bring in every day. It needs the touch of the sea, Father, to soothe it. That's all. You must not ask me. If we took it, uh, and if we brought it back again, uh, the castle would never know. And, and you needn't. But I do. I do know. <sighs> the ceremony is tomorrow. The beast will be brought down to the Isle from the Bell Tower and taken back to the Bell Tower afterwards. At the end, while I'm at prayer, and the others are waiting, there will be a little time. 
when the beast is unattended. In the name of God, he who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, all three, Amen. Amen. In God's name, Father Anthony set the chalice on the altar steps. He took the wooden cross he wore around his neck and he put it on the floor beside the chalice. He lit a candle and stood it on the altar, a circle of light, lit the screen. Amen. Your true light, Holy Father, Heavenly God. This was the screen I saw in my dream, a painting on wood, Christ in a boat, his head on a pillow with the swirling clouds. The beast was brought in. And what do we do now? We watch. To see what? That it bows its head. And does it? Is that bowing? Well, its head has fallen forward. I can't tell if that's through reverence or something else. Listen. That sound, what does it mean? Anything? Perhaps all. But being in the presence of God. Is it? Or does it mock God? What? Which is it? Curse God and die, as Job was advised. You're the priest, tell me. I can't. Not at the moment. Perhaps they're just sounds with no meaning at all. Perhaps. We'll need more than that. Take the beast away! You've seen what it's done. Now do what you have to do. Say a prayer, sing a psalm, I don't care. As long as I have an answer. They dragged the creature on its chains back down the aisle, like throwing a drunk out of an inn. At the top of the aisle I stood waiting, hooded, head bowed. They couldn't see my face. So they handed it over. It was dry to touch, something matted and stiff like seaweed in the sun. God our Father, we turn to you to ask for guidance. We kneel before you and attend. They all knelt and no one paid me any attention. Did anyone see you? No, no, they're all on their knees and praying. Oh, come on then, we have to be quick. Lower the back of the cart. I don't know if it knew what we were doing, but it came meekly enough, though it was slow and heavy. We took it down to the shore. I hammered a spike into the breakwater so we could fix a rope to it. Then I secured the rope to the beast's chain to stop it escaping. There was a bright moon, high up and small, and dark clouds banking for rain. We helped the beast to the stones on the tilt of the beach, a little way from the water's edge. Let it see the waves, make its own way down. Then it dragged itself down the beach, and the first small waves lapped over its curled feet. It rolled. It became sleek, black and sleek under the moon. It turned in the water and flashed silver. And as it coiled through the swell of the sea, I knew what had to be done. Claire? Leave me, Rowena. What's she doing? We can't take it back. What? You know what they'll do. What will they do to Don't you? Don't stop me now. Let go. I knocked the spike out of the breakwater and flung the rope clear. It went snaking over the sea. I saw the beast sink beneath the surface and the water close over it. Then, silence. Thirty paces out, it appeared again. Small and black like a rock. Then it was gone. Oh, Clay. What have you done? You know what I've done. You know why? <gasps> They're coming. You better go. Go? Where? There's no, there's no point. So I stood and waited for Digby and the soldiers to come rattling down the slope towards us. Why did you do this? The creature was dying, sir. Dying? Did it look as if it was dying for God's sake, man? It'll be leagues clear by morning. What were you thinking of? As I say, sir. Oh, you know why it's important, and yet you come down here and release the thing. No, sir. It got away. We never intended No, to... he got away. Because I released it. Clay! Huh? I just decided. The tip of the moment, by myself. Then, what's she doing here? She didn't know what I planned to do. She couldn't, because I didn't know myself. That won't do. 
You know more about this than you're saying. No, sir. Where did it come from? You're the one who found it. You brought it to us. Was that part of the plan? There was no plan. You brought it to the castle on purpose. Was that it? You have no answer? Yes, sir. What I've already told you, the, the simple truth is... Simple it, it, truth? There is no simple truth. You've got no idea of the complications involved here, have you? Listen to me. We put questions to the beast, and we were met with silence. So we asked with a little more rigor. If it had the power to speak, it would have spoken then. Believe me, it would have. So when we take you back... And ask you the same questions. No, you can't! Be quiet! I have to know, and I will find out. <gasps> what was that? Uh, listen! Uh, it's still out there. What? Where? It is, look. It's still there. It was. Clearly there, out beyond a mass of floating weed. A dark shape in a band of moonlight. And it was watching us. What's it? What's it? <laughs> Is it defying us? No, don't stay. It's not moving. Sometimes it was lost in the chop of the waves, but only for a moment. We always caught sight of it again. We stayed for ages, watching, quite still. And then it began to move, to pull steadily towards us. Dip and reappear. Dip, reappear. Closer. Closer. Dear God. It's coming back to us. No. It can't. No. Keep away. This is mockery. It's mocking us. No, sir. I think it only wants to help. Help? How does this help? It's coming back for Clay. Uh, this just adds confusion. No. Get the men to form a line. Down at the sea's edge. Here and now. I can finish this myself. No, don't! It's harmless, man! Take hold of it and bring it to me. And one of you, fetch me a blade. I've had no answers. Nothing. I'm putting an end to this. No, no, please! Wait! Wait, wait, wait for what? Let it be, sir. Just let it be. And why should I do that? It's come back because it's frightened for Clay. How can you know that? I don't, sir, but I'm sure it means no harm. And it's been broken enough. Oh, yeah, tell him you learned nothing, sir. Say, you tried the beast and there was nothing to learn. It was innocent. So you sent it away. And he weakened. Did what she asked. No, not weakened. It, it looked like weakness, but for once, it wasn't. So the soldiers cracked staves against the stones like beaters and drove the creature off. It thrashed in the waves. Frightened, bewildered, then it gave up, pulled away from the shore, and that was the last I saw of it. They let me go. They had no further need for me. And they left us alone on the beach. Dark and empty now. We should go. Rain's on its way. What's the matter? That night, when you took father out, he didn't mean to come back, did he? Did he, Clay? No. What happened? Tell me what happened. Well, I thought we wanted one last trip, that's all. One last encounter with the rough side of the sea. That's why I took him, because I knew what it meant to him. But it was more than that. Yes. I said, we'll turn back now, Jonas, we have to turn back. He said nothing, and the boat was 
rising and falling. And he was sat on the side the way he always sat, very easy. One leg stretched out to the centre of the boat, keep himself steady. And he fell back into the waves. He let himself be swallowed up. And you got him out? Yes. How? Went in after him. Managed to get the net round him and pulled him out. You've never said any of this, Clay. You never explained. When I turned against you. No. I meant to hurt you, the things I said. But you never... Why? To hurt you back. I never wanted to do that. Oh, Clay. I'm sorry. The rain's coming. Uh, look. We'll get back to the cottage. Mm. We walked back, slowly, in spite of the rain. I stepped inside the cottage with her, and there was Jonas, sitting at his window, staring out at the first glimmer of dawn, low on the sea, unmoved, patient. I thought of the beast, out there, somewhere. Comfort, I thought. Bring him comfort. Father? She turned to me. Oh, Clay. And I saw the old man wasn't looking at anything. Not anymore. Father. <coughs> so I stayed with her, in case she should need me. After a while, I told her that he surely knew that she'd sat by him every day. He knew it, and he'd been glad of it, though he'd said not a word. And I hoped that what I told her was true. Her crying for him made her beautiful. But I could not tell her that. Pity isn't always right, Father Anthony said to me. But I think perhaps it is. I took a hand, and as the room grew lighter, we looked out of the window at what Jonas would have seen, the endless reach of the sea, the rain clearing, and one star over a bank of grey cloud. In Beast by Nick Warburton, Clay was played by James Fleet, Rowena by Eve Best, Digby by Struan Roger, and Father Anthony by Gerard McDermott. Music was composed by David Pickfence. The director was Peter Kavanagh. <laughs>